recording. All right. Well, this over here is my wifey for lifey. Unfortunately, she's recovering from the stomach flu and will not be appearing in this film. So, boom, bam. But she's real. I mean, this is totally a hand, right? Oh, that was a faint. We caught you. I don't think I'm not thinking of your imagination anymore. I'm not making you up. This is terrible. What is this going to do for my image? So, I just want to go out on a limb and say, who lied from my girlfriend's couch with my girlfriend in tow? Yay. Yay. Here's Johnny. And this is Steffi, otherwise known as the wifey. I'm the venti wifey, because I'm the venti kid, venti wifey, kid, wifey. <laughs> Yeah, okay. It's been a while. Uh, we've all been battling the stomach flu here in the household, so uh, I guess what we're going to do is run down, and this video, I apologize for the length in advance because it's going to cover a lot of shit, stuff that's been on my mind, and if it goes an hour, it goes an hour. All right. Um, this is wrestling week. This is essentially going to focus on WWE because, <gasps> big surprise, it's only fucking Tuesday. We had a pay-per-view, Elimination Chamber, on Sunday, and I really wanted, really wanted to do something about that. I wanted to get my reaction out there. I've been watching other people's videos, you know, while I've been laying in bed dying, and uh, I've been comforting my sweetheart over here. He's been wonderful. I've been very wonderful. So all you ladies out there, too bad. I mean, oh. So before this gets mushy and you all vomit, like we've been doing all week. Let's get right into it. Um, Sunday was the Elimination Chamber. We know this. What a letdown of a fucking pay-per-view card that was. And this isn't just me and my bias. This is her third, no, second pay-per-view that you've actually mm -hmm. watched. First being the Royal Rumble. And... Highly predictable. Highly predictable. That's what everybody is saying. I read it all over the place. Every forum on the internet is saying it was predictable, it was this, it was that. Nobody's really saying it was good. This is not something you'd want to spend fifty dollars on. We didn't spend any money. And you know, they they gave we this one it was Yeah. They gave this one away in the United Kingdom, so all our boys over there, the Black Rose nineteen ninety one. James, I'm talking to you. Hope you enjoyed it. I really didn't. Uh, British Fist, NJ, Daniel Parkin. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I know we didn't. Um, but free is free. So, honestly, it did not impress. Uh, I'll tell you what wasn't predictable was the structure of this card. Um, when the pay-per-view is called Elimination Chamber, and you have two matches on your card that are the gimmick match involving said Elimination Chamber. Now correct me if I'm wrong over here, but even you, in your infancy being a wrestling fan, what would you think would headline the show? What, what would you think the main event would be? What kind of match? The one that they started with. The one that they started with. Yeah, you would incredible. think that would be at the end, not the Cena bullshit. We'll get to the Cena bullshit a little later, after, you know, I emptied my stomach of its contents. I wasn't trying to premature ejaculate on you there. Oh, God. Premature, though, is exactly what this felt like. This was the match that had the most star power in it all night long, and this was the first thing that they served up to us. And how disappointing was that? It was horrible. Yeah? You think so? Who did you know in this match? If I list off some names, who can you say that you were, you know, being a new wrestling fan that you were into or rooting for? If I say, like, Chris Jericho, do you know who that is? I love Chris Jericho. We love Chris Jericho. This is a keeper. You cannot have her. <laughs> She's my world. If I say CM Punk, you know who that is? Straight edge douche. Straight edge douche. <laughs> nice tats. Um, <laughs> yeah, at least I'm not tribal. You know, he's the champ, and he's had this run for a little bit, but, you know... He's a shrimp. He is a shrimp. But this is what I'm going to say about this. With CM Punk and the fact of his drawing power, quote-unquote, this is how much they believe in it, because they have him as the champion open the show 
and they still have their boy, John Cena, at the top of the fucking ladder in some douchebag ambulance match later on in the night. So, immediately that tells you that, one, Punk is not going to retain the title at WrestleMania when he faces Jericho. Oh, and two, that they have no confidence in him, and that this has just been a test run up until WrestleMania, until they break through their new year, I guess you could call it, their new cycle. Um, if I say The Miz, you know who that is? I love The Miz. We love The Miz. We're following The Miz on Twitter, actually. Just started the just website. Very happy about this. Um, Kofi Kingston, do you remember which one that was? Yeah, Riddler Pants. Riddler Pants. Well, at least he doesn't have to. He did change the color scheme on us, so we, we, we approve that. But all in all, um, you know, he felt like the odd man out in this whole thing. And I've said this before, you know, with my audio with Dream Boy 899, otherwise known as Dustin Herendine. He and I go way back uh, a couple of months doing these predictions and stuff. Um, you know, so I don't want to reiterate everything that I said with him, but. Our truth was in this match. Do you remember who our truth is? The truth just set me free. The truth just set me free. Um, he and Kofi Kingston apparently are a new tag team because you know the elimination chamber didn't go so well for them. It was awkward. It was really awkward. Why would you put two black men in a tag team together? Well, then they had them later on go against Epicon. You know? Against the other two minorities on Raw the next night. We'll get to that. Sorry, I'm getting jumping the gun. <laughs> and, and and the last. The last combatant in this uh, Elimination Chamber match for Raw was none other than the show-off, Dolph Ziggler, with special guest Vicky Guerrero at ringside. So annoying. She can't stand her. I I like Vicky. I think she does a great job. I just think that it's about time they peeled, you know, this asshole that they've been teasing for the main event away from her. And uh, what a predictable, predictable finish to this match. Now... Granted, I had my hopes up. I thought that Jericho would just win the match straight up, and then that would be why Punk would instigate a rematch, logically, for WrestleMania. And I thought that that would be a good slap in the face because Jericho has been kind of doing this whole thing about how everyone is a rip-off artist and a hypocrite and all this, and it was really his chance to shine, especially after the Rumble didn't go down the way that a lot of other people, even myself included, had kind of thought up in their head and predicted. Um... Now, granted, I was very happy that Sheamus won the Rumble, but, you know, if you were trying to build toward Punk and Jericho, I think that having Jericho win this match would have been a lot better of a way to do it. Um, because, in essence, now, the way that they did it was they had him kicked out of the ring last night, you know, faked a head injury, or maybe had a legit head injury, I don't even know, but was taken out of the match, fit, you know, deemed unfit to compete, and then that's the storyline that they could have went with. But then they one-upped it, and they made him compete yet again in the 10-man battle royal on Raw in the main event, and it was really just, it was too fucking much. Mm -hmm. You already knew that this was in the works when Chris Jericho came back in the first place, that he was going to face Punk at WrestleMania. That's what all of us little internet smart marks were thinking. And yes, it took us like three, four weeks to actually get it out of his mouth, you know, at the... You know, and at the Rumble, talking about how he was going to change the world and it was going to end and all this shit. But, like, the writing has been on the wall for months, so it's not like it's a big fucking surprise. You don't have to dick around and do this. Like, you're not building any more suspense having the same ten people that competed last night compete on Raw, and then now a lot more of them are, are out injured. You know, it's, it just doesn't make any sense. These guys are fucking break. Mm -hmm. They compete almost, you know... Five days out of the fucking seven-day week, they're on the road, they're doing house shows, they're doing SmackDowns, they're doing Raws, they're doing whatever. They need they need a break. You know, four or five days touring is a lot. Um, especially house shows where, you know, there aren't cameras and, you know, anything can really happen. Freak accidents, you know, it's... It sucks, but that's, that's how it is. So... This match, you know, really didn't do anything to surprise me. Was it good? Yeah, it had enjoyment value, but when you put your uh, when you put your best foot forward and then don't follow it up throughout the night with consistent other matches that go up in value, it, it really makes your whole card feel underwhelming, which is, you know, the theme of the night, I guess. Um, it's almost like they blew their load first and then didn't know what to do afterward. Like, they were working really hard to get it back up, but they, they couldn't do it. 
and I know that I'm old and sometimes I have that problem too, but you know, a lot of the WWE creative team and a lot of the other people that work for them, they're, you know, they're, they're older white men that have a good salary and can afford Viagra or Cialis. So they should not have that problem. Awkward silence. All right, so the next match on the card was Beth Phoenix versus Tamina, which again was very predictable. You knew going in that Tamina didn't have a fucking chance because Beth Phoenix is going to retain till WrestleMania. Uh, Tamina is a great, great performer. She's really found her niche, I think, with this whole, you know, emphasis on being Snooka's daughter and you know, flying high, doing the 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 big body splash off the top rope, you know, shades of her father. Booker T has been really good about getting this over. Oh, shucky ducky quack quack. I'm just saying, like, it just seems, you know, really larger than life. And uh, she really put on a good match with Beth Phoenix. The only thing that really kind of pissed me off was that... She didn't win. Well, not that she didn't win, because she wasn't really geared to win, but the fact that at the at the final moments of the match, it was like, she turned around the other person's finisher almost like lickety fucking split and within like another 10 seconds the match was over. Mm-hmm. You don't kick out of somebody's finisher and then all of a sudden get up and do yours. It's just, that's bad booking. But was it the right decision? Yeah, it was a safe decision. You know, but there weren't any surprises. You didn't see karma come out and interfere, which I, I really didn't want that in the first place. I just wanted a good women's match and I thought that's what they gave us. They gave us like seven, seven and a half minutes worth of match time on this. It went long enough to tell a story. And I'm not saying it was a bad story. I just think the ending was fucking rushed. It really looked rushed. Mm -hmm. And honestly, they didn't have to rush because they had a lot of time to fill in this pay-per-view with four announced matches. Give me a fucking break. Um, You can already tell that I didn't really enjoy this pay-per-view. It's not a big fucking secret. A lot of people probably have given this failing grades or barely passing grades. and I don't even know yet. I'll think about it while we're going on here talking about this other shit, but... Then, then, the Elimination Chamber had its second Elimination Chamber, which did not main event the show. And, of course, it had Pedo Beard, the douchebag well, Daniel Bryan, your favorite. I hate him. Can't stand him. And the reason that we can't stand him is because why? He's a douchebag? He's egotistical? He's a chicken shit. That's it. And we can't stand it. We can't get behind it. There's a time and a he's place. He's a coward. He's a coward. You There's can tell a... in his eyes. Like, he's terrified. He's such a douche. I want to kick him down a flight of stairs. Oh, ooh. Kick down a flight of stairs. That sounds like something happened to Randy Orton. We won't talk about that. Okay, so. Needless to say, going into this match, you know, we were really hoping that Daniel Bryan was not going to retain. But the writing was all over the wall because Orton got pulled from this fucking match for some stupid injury. You know, the raw beforehand. And it was like. Because of Daniel Bryan. What? I don't think it was because of Daniel Bryan necessarily. They said that because of his belt hitting the match. Of course they said that, but that could be a storyline. He probably had the concussion before he went into the match, and it just got worse. He kept dropping himself on his own head, trying to give Big Show the RKO. Yeah, so who Big the hell knows? Big show. Big show is gigantic, but Big Show is also a teddy bear. When was the last time Big Show injured somebody? No. Exactly. Big, Big Show is a consummate professional. He's always taken care of other people because of his size. Um... But, yeah, this was very unimpressive. Um, after seeing the other Raw match, which I felt was a better match, this really didn't do it for me. Um, I love the fact that Cody Rhodes, you know... Got, love Cody Rhodes. Love Cody Rhodes. He got spotlighted in this, kind of, kind of, sort of. But then everybody else is talking out there about Santino. Eh, and about how he, you know, took out Daniel Parkin's boy, Cody Rhodes. I, I'm with Daniel. I, and, I'm pissed about it, too. I thought it was bullshit. And I am sure Nature Girl, underneath that bandana and that do rag, is probably like steaming mad. Because Cody Rhodes is amazing. Cody and that, Rhodes and is. And Santino's a joke. He's awesome, but he's a joke. Like. Now, now here's the philosophy behind oh, this. They really needed a big, you know, baby face star to help tell the story of this match, but I think they did a complete injustice. And I think that Santino was the wrong guy to really try to have this swan song or. This last, you know, this last minute, you know, 15 seconds of fame kind of thing. Like, he's almost going to do it. He's almost going to do it. No, he's really not going to do it, guys. As soon as it was just Santino Barrett and Daniel Bryan in the ring, the writing was completely on the wall. And if you couldn't figure it out, you've probably never watched wrestling before in your life. Um, no judgment. I, you probably I figured, it, you out. figured it out. I know. I predicted so, it. I predicted you came out, too. You 
and she actually was very spot on about every like the order in which people were going to come out. I was very surprised. I was very, I was very pleased too because you know that's that's skill. That's skills, and you don't see too many skills anymore in the wrestling business, let alone from the fans. So. Um, I liked how Show was trying to get inside the pod to get at Brian, but then again, it was just playing to more of this chicken shit thing. And if Brian, you know, had any sack on him, he would have attacked Show as he was trying to get in, rather than just, eh, fetal position, eh, I'm a loser. You know, he ran out of there as soon as he could. Um, you know, Big Show had to get eliminated by two people. I thought Barrett and Cody Rhodes did a terrific job of working together to, to do that. Um. Holly in this match was a fucking joke. He should have never been in it in the first place. Uh, if Mark Henry was well enough to walk down to the ring, he could have competed in this thing long enough to get speared and be out. You know what I mean? Like, fuck that. Like, why did Kali even need a payday for this? Motherfucker doesn't even deserve a job in that company, let alone a title shot. Go to hell. I know you don't understand English, so let me put it in Punjabi for you. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> Alright, not to be racist or anything. Jesus, like, this guy totally doesn't belong anywhere near a wrestling ring. He's a walking freak show. He should go back to the circus. He's creepy. Barnum and Bailey called. You know, he's got bigger fucking man tits than, like, you know, my entire my entire male line in my family. He's dating back 24 years. You know, like, come on. It's, it's disgusting. It really is. This guy needs to go. He can't walk down to the ring without looking like a loser. So, just, no. I'm, I'm not all about this. I hate Kali. I've never been shy about saying it. God, oh my. So, I mean, you know, the match kind of had promise when Big Show was starting out really strong, but the, the ending of this match was so disappointing. Um, and it's not because, you know, Santino didn't win. That's not what was disappointing about it. What was disappointing is that Santino and Daniel Bryan were the last two in a fucking match. Well, because you knew that Santino had no chance with left shoulder. Uh, you know, if it would have been down to Orton and Bryan, you would have said, oh, well, Orton's got a very good chance. And that's probably who they were, will, you know, be- banking on to take the title to WrestleMania because he's a bigger name and a bigger draw. And he could have went against a guy like Sheamus, which, granted, they've had matches in the past that stank up the fucking place. But I think, you know, in terms of where Sheamus is at right now, with the amount of dry, you know, fan cheering and whatnot wow. that he's got behind him, it could have been a decent match, you know. And Orton could have probably turned heel and, you know, played to his strength somehow. I don't fucking know. I feel like Just, Orton turning heel is coming. It has to, because he's a terrible face. Yeah. Um, you know, I can't say enough good things about Cody Rhodes. He's really impressing me as a performer. He's really growing. He's always improving. He's and wonderful. He, he's just got that, that it factor. Um, he can be a really big star one day. He's going to be a you really can big tell. star. And he's so I, charismatic. I feel like he's going to be the future of the WWE. And quote me on this saying this since last year, probably around Night of Champions when I started doing videos on YouTube. Go back and check them out. After this match, they had some stupid backstage segment where Natalia farted, Hornswoggle was eating cheese, and Justin Gabriel, for whatever reason, got into an altercation with Jack Swagger. And then the, the SmackDown general manager made a match for the United States champion that's featured on Raw. It doesn't. Ha- it doesn't have to fucking make sense, people. The, the thing that really gets to me is that you showcase the United States title with no build, with a champion that you have no fucking you know, no hope for, somebody you don't give a shit about, in a throwaway match with a throwaway champ, with a throwaway belt at this point because it hasn't been defended on television in God knows how long, essentially, since he won the stupid thing from Zack Ryder, which went on to further a dumbass storyline that we won't talk about yet, but. Why have this match, you know, or if you were going to have this match and thought you needed to have this match, why not play up to it at the beginning of the fucking night? Why would you put this match for a mid-card title after a match, after two matches, for your biggest two titles in the company? Explain this to me. I have no fucking idea. I cannot fathom this. It really irks me. It's like, um, it's just, it's just, it's very confusing. And it's been pent up inside of me for days, you know. Essentially, I think when I had that stomach flu and I was doing all that vomiting, I think that was part of it. So, um, yeah, forgive me. Uh, the last match of the night, after, of course, we had, you know, a million fucking video packages between 
John Cena and The Rock and the ship for WrestleMania. Cena's Jim. Cena's Jim. Because I like seeing, you know, three or four FCW people on the on the pay-per-view for a cheap plug. Yeah, woohoo. Go FCW guys, but you're not featured on Raw. You know, like, some of these people that watch this don't even know who the fuck you are, so... I don't know who watches or still watches. Hooray. Like... It's a developmental territory for WWE, and Daniel Parkin watches it and does a review on his own channel. You should go watch it. You should get behind that. These FCW guys are probably, you know, the next generation of stars ever since they got rid of OVW, but I digress. The point being that this Cena rock shit has a place, and maybe it has a place after the match is over between... Kane and Cena. Not every show. Not every fucking five minutes. Not every show. Not every, it's just it's, it's disgusting. Like a show. Let the Elimination Chamber be its own fucking entity on the road to WrestleMania. Especially when people are paying for it. Yeah, if you're paying fifty dollars, do you really want to see fucking forty minutes worth of video packages and different bullshit hyping this main event match that we've known about for WrestleMania for an entire year? Yeah. For an entire year. Have we not had enough time to build this up? We're going to get video packages and fucking, you know, confrontations for the next six weeks. Really, at WWE, you need to go fuck yourselves. You need to learn how to make a fucking television product that doesn't suck my asshole. Like Sammy's black asshole over there. <laughs> Stupid cat. Thinks this place is a food bank, I swear to God. <laughs> so, Kane versus Cena in an ambulance match in an entirely predictable manner because Cena's going over. Because, and I've talked about this you know, at large, but this was a really bad program to put these guys into. It was a complete filler, throwaway feud. And, you know, nobody really wins here. Like, if Cena wins, great, he goes on to face The Rock. And if Cena loses, he still goes, he the still goes on to face The Rock. So what happens at Kane? Does he ride off into the sunset? Does he get deep pushed now? Is he off television? Is he on television? Is he still going to be in Cena's ear? What the fuck is going on? Because... Maybe he gets to have sex with Eve. We don't, maybe he gets to rape Eve. I don't know, but yeah. he turned heel, so now, oh, who, 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 has Kane been pulling the strings of Eve all different. along? Who gives a shit? It's stupid. Mm -hmm. it's a whole different you, you got Zack Ryder involved in this whole angle, it was really dumb, and now he's injured and off of television. But they you're, pushed him in a wheelchair. You, oh, nice. They pushed him off the stage in a wheelchair. Twice, I think. However, now you actually have people out that are legitimately injured. People like Rey Mysterio, people like Christian, people like... Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett. I think Ziggler is pretty hurt after that bump yeah, he took from Raw. He, he was back. I, yeah, he was back for SmackDown. But he didn't really do a whole hell of a lot. That match was very short. Um, yeah, because they don't give these guys breaks. And they, they just like, expect them to go back in. Oh, God, it's terrible. But this ambulance match was, like, big deal. Like, I really didn't care about this. And I don't think a lot of other people out there did either, unless they were ages 2 to, like, fucking 10. Like, not to knock that demographic or anything. You know, wrestling needs younger fans, but can yeah, you just not... They're like 22%. Like, they're they can even, chill out. They just need to shut the fuck up with that stuff and and try to cater to the adults that would buy the merchandise and pay for the stuff and, you know, want to see wrestling and not, you know, a Twitter war. Ugh. My God. Okay. And Twitter, really. Can we stop plugging Twitter every five fucking minutes? I don't care what everybody's ha handle and hashtag are. If I gave a fuck about that, I could find out about it at WWE. Com, which is also plugged the fuck out of during the show. I'm not trying to go online. I'm trying to watch television. If I want, I you know I have a laptop. It's right in front of me Twitter, recording this. They're in sponsored agreement. So. Oh my god! Just, more funding. Of course, it's, it's, so it should be a better show, right? Well, you would think they can afford to do more, but they don't. Um, all in all, this pay per view was very disappointing to me. Um, I really want my three hours of time back that I spent on it. You know, since nothing happened out of the fucking ordinary, that wasn't unpredictable. It was like, eh, really? What was the shocking moment of the night? The fact that Santino was one of the last people in the Elimination Chamber match against Daniel Bryan? Like, oh, wow, all right. Maybe if he was fighting Hulk Hogan and was one of the last people, I might have given a shit, like, you know, 20 years ago. But Daniel Bryan has been a terrible champion. I don't know how you people can defend that. He only got his title because of Money in the Bank. He only got his title because of Money in the Bank. He was never going to be built up to be one of these guys to get a legitimate title shot. He was always going to have to cash in. 
on the road to WrestleMania. Maybe it was going to be him versus Mark Henry or him versus Big Show in this David versus Goliath thing. And maybe that would have been the right way. But he never would have been able to pull it off. He's a shrimp. This whole baby face David versus Goliath shit happens once in a lifetime. They did it with Rey Mysterio versus Kane or The Undertaker. Who the fuck they did it with? Maybe they did it with Batista. Or maybe they did it with all three. They've probably done it over the years with a thousand people. I remember in WCW when Rey Mysterio took on Kevin Nash. Okay? They've done this shit before. It's annoying. I don't like it. And it's not a proper way to use a guy like a Daniel Bryan. Just saying. Anyway. That's all I have to say about that stupid-ass pay-per-view. Now we're going to talk about Raw last night. Raw was one last night. Raw was a fucking... It, it gave me a headache. Um, a disaster. Really, to start out with Eve and trot her stupid ass out there and with Cena. Cena, again, who we really didn't want to see. Like, I really wanted that ambulance match to take maybe him and Kane off the TV for a week or two. Well, she had her whole talk with the Bella Twins about she was using Zack Ryder and now she's going to use Cena. Is this necessary? Do, you care? do we give a fuck about this, Eve? Like, do you really need another one? push? No, you don't. Is Karma going to fight at WrestleMania? Yes. Does any of this other diva shit matter? No. Well, I have to say one thing before we continue is that whole thing where Cena went in the ring and he was insulting her. I thought that was kind of bullshit. Like, as much as, you know, Eve is probably a promiscuous skank. and a skank. Uh, skank the t- juice. Skank juice. I think it's kind of bullshit to, you know, talk about how you're anti-bullying and then do this whole campaign about how she's a whore and, like, a hosky. And get it to the point where it's twittering worldwide. Yeah, no, you're just encouraging the... bullying. You're it's such a, set... a fucking hypocrite. Fuck off, WWE. Be a star and kiss my fucking asshole. Exactly. It's just setting a bad taste, like, in my mouth because it's just, it's not fair. It's not nice. Even if she's a whore, you don't have to publicly announce it in front of everyone, have everyone chant it. It's being a bully. So good job, Zena. I would rather use your dog with no teeth as a glory <laughs> hole than to put myself through that again. <laughs> It's actually kind of turning me on. I'll be right back. I'm uh, just kidding, for God's uh, sake, people. Shock value. Raw started off ugh, awful. And I think that a lot of Raw was awful last night. Granted, we finally got the, the come to a head and the closure with this whole is Triple H going to fight The Undertaker at WrestleMania shit? But did it though. really have to go like 25 fucking minutes to figure this out? He, how many times does Triple H have to walk out of the ring, undo his jacket, and come back in? Three fucking times, I think, he stepped out of the ring. Yeah, it was about that. I was so disinterested with this. I was disinterested with this when they mentioned the fucking idea that this could happen months ago. I don't give a fuck about it anymore. Just get this shit over with. Is it great that it's in a Hell in a Cell? Of course it is, because it could be a phenomenal match in a Hell in a Cell. A Hell in a Cell is a once and for all end of all this stuff. However... There's a lot of internet rumors out there that Triple H is actually going to break the streak of The Undertaker, who thrives in his whole career now is kind of built on this streak and this presence at WrestleMania of being undefeated and not, like, like really? Like, come well, on. it's being hinted at because, you know, Triple H kept saying, like, I'm the one who could end your streak. I'm the one, da, 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 da. It's Tri- like foreshadowing. Triple H like has fought Undertaker twice at WrestleMania previously. This is the third time. So this is like the Return of the King movie. This is going to wrap it all up, right? Return of the King. It's going to have 25 endings. It's going to have about 25 endings. I guarantee fucking to you. It's going to be super long and drawn out. It's supposed to be epic. And I hope for, you know, the sake of television and for pay-per-view and for all the Undertaker fans out there like myself that Undertaker retains the streak intact. That there's no petty underlying weird shit going on. I hope it's definitive. And I hope that he and Triple H both retire from television after this. I'm really tired of seeing Triple H's big fucking nose out there. I didn't give a shit when he took over as COO. I don't give a fuck about what he thinks about John Laurinaitis. I'd honestly rather watch John Laurinaitis now, even though I think he's a douche, than to see any more Triple H. I don't want to see any more 20 to 30 minute God promos in the middle of the fucking ring and have him suck the heat or take the opportunity for a younger guy to fight Undertaker at WrestleMania and get their fucking five minutes in the sun. Nothing Triple H, you selfish son of a bitch. Go marry the boss's daughter some more. Make another kid. Get your big fucking nose out of this. Wear your goddamn suit. And get off my television. So that's all I have to say about that. If you're a Triple H fan, good for you. I'm not. That's my opinion. I mean, if you want to leave me some hateful comments below, go ahead about how I don't get it. And Triple H is such a great performer. Don't no, fuck that. He's a founding member of the Breakfast Club. He can suck my ass. Like, 
be saying that. It should be my new slogan. Live from sucking my ass, it's your face, Triple H. Uh, uh, uh. So, um, where are we? Oh, we're talking about the matches that happened yeah. overall, right? Okay, so there's this tag team match between Kofi Kingston and R Truth. Epico and Primo. Uh, against Epico and Primo. Is it because it's Black History Month that we're getting all this fucking interracial, you know, mm-hmm. tag teamage going on and Ron Simmons being in the Hall of Fame? Not that Ron Simmons doesn't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, but I'm just, like, putting this together now because it is February and it is Black History Month. And I wonder if WWE isn't being a little bit nice with the PR in order to gain more votes for Linda McMahon's future Senate seat. Just think postulating that, if you will. Pontificating. Yes, I know that word. Do you? All right. Um, yeah, so it was a non-title match, but after the fucking match, they handed them the titles like they had won it. Like, what the fuck gives? Right? You remember them holding up mm-hmm. the titles, and I said, wow, that was a really shitty way to, to transfer the titles over unannounced, right? Mm-hmm. Did they say it was a non-title match at the beginning of the match? I didn't think so. Um, so, yeah. So apparently they're still, you know, Epico and Primo are still the champs, which is good, because I'm supposed to root for Epico. Yay. But apparently they want to take the titles off of them, and probably before WrestleMania. Boom. Um... And then tonight we get a fucking random match between Swagger and Ziggler, who was hurt, and like R Truth and Kofi Kingston on, on the Super Duper SmackDown, and that's just not even. Okay. It's ridiculous. It was such a short match. It was like really, what's the point? Um, Raw was completely chock full of promos again, and it wasted so much time with this Cena shit. And then and it, Cena did his announcement. And then Cena did his big fucking announcement. And then he was laying into Rocky again for not being there and calling him out for next Monday. And it's like, can you just fucking wait till he's there? It's not like you haven't been doing this the whole time. It's the same shit that comes out of your mouth every time. And I don't give a fuck how much more of an edge you're coming off with now. And if you say dirty words like professional wrestler on television. Well, because he did say mangina, too. Oh, he God. said rock, so he, he had said mangina. mangina and pink parts. Uh, oh, my, the world is going to hell PG era might actually come to an end. I doubt that. You wait like five more fucking years before that shit goes up in flames, I'll tell you what. Um, I just can't stand it. It's honestly, it's getting to the point where it's it's so uninteresting and uninspiring that I feel like they've almost taken the whole fucking cast that ever wrote failing soap operas and hired them for their creative t- Oh, that they did that. So... Cena Fest. It's, it's ridiculous. It's like, you know damn well that Cena's going to win this WrestleMania match. He's going to have all the steam going after the fact. And then he's going to get back right into the title picture. Have that belt again until he dies. And it's just like, really? Can we not generate any future interest or any future stars out of this? You already hate the fact that Punk isn't drawing what you thought he would or what you want him to. You brought Jericho back to hold the fucking title over as a placemat you know, in a placeholder until Cena was freed up because Jericho's a heel and Cena's a face and it'll probably be at SummerSlam and fucking bet. Oh my god. So, yeah. You got to see an appearance of Sheamus last night. I did get to see Sheamus on television on Raw and that was very exciting for me. Unfortunately, he was on TV for about 20 seconds. He laid in the fucking Daniel Bryan with one move and then left. Awesome. Great. Mm-hmm. Terrific. So, the main event of the evening was the 10-man match, which went over in time, but took like five commercial breaks during the whole span. And I was just like, really? Can we not get it like a real match without interruption here? Do we have to pay that many bills on USA? I just don't understand. So, did everybody have to have their damn you know, entrance and shit, couldn't we have cut that out and just had them introduced in the ring and given them more time to compete? I don't understand. The match was a fucking injury fest left and right. And it was, uh-huh. it was the same stupid eliminations that we saw last night, essentially. Yeah, sure, maybe it spun off this Cody Rhodes Big Show feud, or maybe it spun off a Cody Rhodes-Santino feud. I really don't know what the fuck's going on. And to be honest, I mean, as long as Cody Rhodes starts getting more featured on on television, I'll be fine with it, you know, and as long as he's got a strong WrestleMania opponent, I'll be fine with it. 
Obviously, they're not bringing Gold Dust back, which is what I thought they would do, which is what he deserves. He deserves to face his own brother at WrestleMania and beat him and prove that he's, you know, he belongs up there with his father. The American Dream, baby! Dusty Rhodes, baby! The Court the Schleg Daddy, baby! Mm-hmm. Oh, watching too much Glee, folks. Yeah. <laughs> she made me do it. So, yeah. Anyway, Wade Barrett's out for six to eight weeks at least, it looks wow. like, with a dislocated elbow. Ouch. Did Look, that he re- landed wrong. Did that really oh. have to happen? Did he have to have somebody thrown on top of him after he had just been eliminated from the ring without oh. a whole lot of time to recover? Did our truth not help catch him? Because he was out there too. Dolph Ziggler comes flying over the fucking top rope, hits his forehead on the fucking down table. Come on, show, figure out what you're doing. Know your own strength a little bit. Um, he looked bad. I just talked about show being a consummate professional in the beginning of this, but I guess the last time show injured somebody was last night. Uh, apparently, when Cody Rose had knocked out of the ring, he hurt his arm too. So what the hell? Um, Don't protect Cody Rose. God almighty. It just seems like everybody is falling like flies on their healthy list. And then they've got people that were healthy that were suspended for violating the wellness policy, a.k.a. getting high as a kite. I just, I don't, what is going on? WWE with this fucking roster that's like, you know, not big enough to, to handle the roster split as it is that I've been talking about for fucking ages, now seems thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. And Orton isn't even in the picture because of a concussion, so... You know, you've got Cena carrying Raw, and you've got SmackDown on the shoulders of the Big Show. That's your star power. Okay. And Ryan. Yeah, oh, you've got Pedo Beard. I forgot. Yeah, you're world champion. Because that's going so well for him. And so well for SmackDown's writing. Um, yeah. All right, so let's get to SmackDown. SmackDown this week was better. It's okay. It was, it was the best show of the week so far. Better than pay-per-view if you ask me, but Definitely. um, you know, for for the way that it started out with its kind of speedy, let's get to it kind of style, um, you know, I thought that was pretty good, but then it seemed like a lot of it was rush, 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 and then to try to incorporate all this bullshit that happened at the ending, and we'll, we'll get into that, but um, yeah, I just kind of felt like, uh, I kind of felt like that promo segment between Miz and Brian and Sheamus was really, really good. And then um, except the, for Daniel Bryan, like, smacking Sheamus and running like a bitch. Well, it was kind of designed that way, to get Miz and Sheamus into a match. But, yeah, but still. Like, but from can... the look at it, like, from the start, did you think it was really going to be a match? Or should it just have been maybe like a beatdown, and then Sheamus should have taken them both out, not even had a match? And then they could have called it there. But... Great match out of The Miz and Sheamus. There was, I love The Miz. There was good chemistry in the ring there, and I, I commented with her about that earlier. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I was very impressed with that. And it, to say that I was actually impressed by something WWE did in the last few days, you know, while I've been vomiting and crapping myself at the same time, that says a lot. You know, I've been in a rather, rather bad mood, you know, and the whole house is sick and the mood is kind of... <clears throat> But this kind of brought it back up a little bit, so good job for that. That was a very good decision on your part, and, you know, I wish that Miz and Sheamus had time for an actual feud before that you get to Mania, so that, you know, Sheamus could get put over a little bit more, and have more more power, I guess you could say, going into Mania, you know? Not that I think he personally needs it, but there's still some doubters out there, and I would like to silence them and make, make absolute certain that Daniel Bryan is not going to have that title after Mania. They've wanted to put it on Sheamus, I think, since last year, but they just didn't really know how to do it. And now that he's got his repackage of his character, he's a babyface. There you go, perfect way to do it. Um, yeah, if Daniel Bryan got it, I'd be so mad. If Daniel Bryan retains and the Royal Rumble winner again does not win, it, it's really it's it's a useless kind of fucking thing. It's like why even have the Royal Rumble at that point to determine who's going to be the number one contender if you're not going to you know, foreshadow who your your next big breakout star for that year, at least until WrestleMania, is going to be. It, 
it's like that person deserves it, you know? Steve Austin won three times. Won the belt three times. Just going out on a limb here, like, shouldn't we follow that tradition? That's one thing that WWE, you know, they seem to want to you know, bang into our head at the beginning of the program and they talk about, yeah, sure, we promised you a good main event. And that that's tradition. That's the old black and white TV talking to you. That's something that this business was based on. You know, his, Vince McMahon's father, Vince Sr., you know, tradition. Just, just think about the word. I don't even need to fucking say any more about it. You know where I'm going with this. Blah. Teddy Long and Johnny Laronitis getting into it again tonight. They already had a fucking segment where Otunga came out there and squashed Ezekiel Jackson again in essentially the same match we saw on Raw. Waste of my fucking time. If this is building up to another Battle of the Billionaires type match where they both select the champion and then the That's winner... What they're doing. Yeah, the winner gets to... to rule both shows or whatever. So be it, but do you really have to do it every fucking day? have the same match with the same contestants. Like, really? Especially if we just saw this on Raw. Give them both a godforsaken break. Please. You know, and then to get involved again in the main event of the show and interrupt the friggin' segment with Oksana and Teddy Long. It's just... It seems like there's so much there that doesn't actually need to be happening in but order to advance the storyline. I'm sorry? And then they kept recapping Raw. Oh, yeah, with the Raw recap. Yeah. They played the Undertaker and Triple H thing like we hadn't just watched it last night. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And then they showed Cena and Eve clips. Cena and Eve clips. And how frustrating is that? To see the same programming twice. Like, do you really need that? It is. It's a big filler. And, you know, they complained as much about how Brodus Clay wasn't impressing them with his in-ring style. Yet you'd give him, like, you know, two and a half to three minutes to do a squash match, and how much offense do you really think he's going to get in? But you've got time for all this video package shit instead of focusing on your new talent and trying to get them over, or tweaking a character even. You just give up altogether on them because you, you physically can't pencil them into the show. Fuck you. That's all I have to say about that. Um, so, yeah, this main event tonight with its restarts, not once but twice, so they had three separate matches in this main event for the main event. Went to commercial, I think, four times. Mm -hmm. um, I even got the friggin' door for the pizza guy, you know, managed to come back, and the match still wasn't fucking done. It was like, really? Come on. And then Teddy Long walking and storming off at the end of the night without saying anything. Booker T's wondering who won. It's, like, it's, just, it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. There's no reason for this. If they were going to make a fuss over it, they should have done it between the the Otunga and Ezekiel Jackson match. That should have been where it happened. It shouldn't have been with this champion versus champion thing. Why do you have to throw the belts and those champions under the bus to advance this shitty feud between two guys that really don't belong in charge of either TV show because they both seem incompetent at running their own show? Ugh. Bring back Mick Foley as a general manager for crying out loud. All right. I think we're essentially done. Is there anything else from tonight that you would like to talk about that made any fucking difference to you? Not really. No? All right. Well, seeing as we're going on the 40-minute mark here, I think we've talked a long time, expressed a lot of our frustration, talked about what we'd like to see. Oh, I did like that Seamus when Sam Punk and Daniel Bryan were going at it. The Seamus, like, knocked Daniel Bryan. He threw him back in the ring, yeah. right? Yeah. I like that. Too. I didn't like that because they didn't even count it. You know, it was just it, it. He was even using Sheamus as a friggin', as an instrument to further along the Johnny Ace Teddy Long story. It didn't even. But I like that Sheamus thing. I I love to see Sheamus too. Don't get me wrong. I think he's a wonderful competitor, and I had picked him from last year to win the Royal Rumble and be headlining WrestleMania. But he doesn't need to be used like that. He could been in his own fucking segment, and he deserves that spotlight. He doesn't deserve to share it with two middle-aged men that, you know, are probably not, shouldn't have anything to do with television at this point. Johnny Ace is terrible on the microphone. He botches all his lines. Teddy Long doesn't seem like he can cut a damn promo either anymore. He's lost it, you know? He's like fucking ten years too late. I just, ugh. I don't know. Why didn't we have any women's competition really on the show? 
today? Well, you know, it's because we had that mixed, not the mixed, it was because we had the tag match last night with Kelly Kelly and, right? Kelly oh. Kelly and Oksana against the Bella Sluts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was so pointless, I forgot about it. Yeah, it was really stupid. It was over in a blink of an eye, so you, you know, you've missed it. Didn't the Bella Sluts win? The Bella Sluts did win. They used twin magic. Well, I think so. <laughs> to think, I actually wanted them to win on a demon search and nine years ago. Well, they are for Jesus, my God. <sighs> I miss divas like Trish Stratus that could actually fucking wrestle. Point taken. You know, and I don't care what you look like. As long as you can wrestle, that's what it's all about. It's a wrestling product. And to think that you're going to get along with anything but is ridiculous. If you can't put on a match in the ring, you don't belong in the ring. If you're not in the ring, what the fuck are you doing in the wrestling business? <sighs> that seems like a good line to end it on, huh? Well, this is a pretty strong statement, I would think. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we get more of you in these next coming up videos, huh? Mm-hmm. I'd like more of you. Hey, now. That gives me an idea. <laughs> That's the end of this program. I'm going to go try and, uh, well, you know. <laughs>